So I would shave, but it's part of my Halloween costume and I got a party to go to on Saturday. Hello and welcome back to Writer Sanctuary. Today I'm going to talk about how to use WordPress to write content for text broker clients. WordPress is one of the most popular content management systems on the internet. In fact, it holds about 60% of the market share. I found that it's a great tool for writing content for clients on text brokers simply because of the tools you can install. Today we're going to look at some of the tools that I use to make clients happy. In fact, I have yet to see a revision request from a client after writing their content with WordPress. Now the one thing to keep in mind is that this is not WordPress.com. That's the free hosting thing. Today I'm going to be using actual WordPress itself. Now WordPress.com isn't all that bad, it's just that you don't get access to a lot of the tools I'm going to wind up using. And I'm not going to be marketing this website, so it doesn't really matter if I have all the cool marketing tools that WordPress.com comes with. Essentially, all I need is the backbone of WordPress. And since I pay for my own hosting at HostGator, I'm able to create as many subdomains as I'd like. And depending on your account, most of the time this is free. Can you install WordPress locally? Absolutely. It takes a little bit more effort to install WordPress on a local computer and across a network, but it's far more secure and it works really well. The problem is, is that with older systems it can kind of bog it down because you're using up quite a few resources. It's not just WordPress you're installing, you have to also install PHP and all the other stuff that comes with it. So today I'm just going to be concentrating on my subdomain with WordPress. And if you pay for hosting services on the internet, like through HostGator, then setting up WordPress is pretty easy. You just go to Quick Install. This system will actually set up everything you need for WordPress automatically for you. So now that we got WordPress installed, let's take a look at it. This is a basic install of WordPress. There's absolutely nothing on it. In fact, I still have the your site is currently displaying the coming soon page. And since I'm just using it to write content, I really don't need any of the cool stuff that it suggests, like a coming soon page or even Google Analytics. Essentially, I'm just using it as a word processor that's stored online. The biggest reason is so that I can access this word processor from anywhere. So if I'm not home sitting at my desk or if I'm on my laptop, it wouldn't take much to go ahead and just load up the website and type in the content for the client. And since I don't ever save any content on this site, it doesn't really matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is install WordFence. So we go to Plugins and Add New. Close all this crap here. I'm going to search for WordFence. I hope I spell it right. We just hit Install Now. Activate. And then we can put in our information for WordFence. Now the reason I installed WordFence is to keep the site protected. And even though I'm not going to be having any content on it and dragging in an audience, I still want to make sure that nobody else can inject phishing sites into my subdomain. And even though there's not going to be anything on the subdomain, I still want to make sure nobody else can access it. Coincidentally, when you install WordPress from HostGator, it comes with Jetpack. And we're going to use Jetpack because we're going to use the proofreading part that's in it. Now in order to use Jetpack, you need to have a free WordPress.com account. Now, you don't have to worry about spam or anything else, but it is kind of handy to have WordPress.com anyway. I use WordPress.com to manage, well, Jetpack, and then I also like the statistics that it shows. So, not only do I get information from analytics, but I can also go to WordPress and see exactly where my websites stand. But it's a free account, and all you gotta do is just hit Set Up Jetpack and authorize it to link to your account. And after you start with the free account, your jetpack is ready to go. Personally, I'd go ahead and hit the activate recommended features, which I believe already enables proofreading. It does. Now with jetpack ready, it's time to install Tiny MCE Advanced. Now this is a plugin that adds far more tools to the word processor of WordPress than just the basic stuff that's in the visual editor. It essentially turns WordPress's editor into a far more advanced word processor. So we look for Tiny MCE Advanced. Oops. Install and activate. If you ever want to see what Tiny MCE Advanced does, go to Settings, go to Tiny MCE Advanced, and from here you can customize the outlook of your toolbar. Now you probably won't use all of this for your clients, but there's a lot of them that might want some of the special stuff like Superscript, Subscript, anchor text, stuff like that. I find that it's always just a good idea to have it installed because you never know. And this also helps for writing content outside a text broker. So it's still a good thing to have. Now with Tiny MCE Advanced installed, it's time to move on to the big boy. 
This next tool is the one that's helped quite a bit, not only on my websites, but for the clients I write for on TextBroker. We're going to install Yoast SEO. So go to Plugins and Add New. We're going to look for Yoast SEO. Install. And activate. Now Yoast SEO is going to give you a couple of notifications. These notifications are just simply telling me that the SEO of my site is kind of having a problem. But that's okay because I'm not marketing the site, remember? I'm just using it for a word processor. So that's all right. Now the biggest reason why I install Yoast SEO is because of the features that come with when you're creating content. And now that we have everything installed, let's create some content. So we're going to go up to Posts and Add New. Now what we're going to do is just scroll down and start typing our content. Okay, now let's dive into why this is such a great system for TextBroker. First of all, look at the word count. I'm at 136 words. And if you write for TextBroker, you know that the word count matters. So right off the bat, WordPress is already telling me how many words I have available. Now the word count is going to be off just slightly when you copy and paste into TextBroker. It's going to be off maybe about 5 or 10 words. Not, nothing too big. That's only because the two systems have different ways of counting. So let's scroll down to see why Yoast SEO is such a great tool for TextBroker. So we scroll down take a look at our Yoast tab. And the first thing we're going to see is the readability analysis. Now if we click this tab, Yoast will tell us our score on everything here. So your flesh reading ease, passive voice, consecutive sentences, subheading distribution, paragraph length, sentence length, and transition words. All of these are optimal for SEO. And as a result, your clients are going to love it. So what happens when you create content that looks kind of crappy? Well, let's say that we don't put any paragraphs and uh, we start too many words with the same word like this, like that, like the other. Now when we look at our score, well, consecutive sentences, we have three sentences in a row starting with the same word, which is like. Transition word, we've lost some, some of the score on that, so we have to use more of them. But everything else looks great. One of the reasons why I like SEO is because it gives you these kind of tips on how to fine tune your content. And you can click these links here and learn more about how transition words work. You can click this one to see what consecutive senses mean. Yoast is more than just an SEO tool. It's a helpful learning tool. And let's say that we want to see where these consecutive senses are. If we click the eyeball here, it'll highlight where our senses are. Now this is quite handy, especially when you're creating a big bulk line of content and you don't really know where everything's at. At this point, we can go ahead and fix it by putting a period and say, just by doing that, we just improved. Now the only thing we're missing is transition words. If you don't know what a transition word is, I would suggest looking it up in Google. It'll save you a lot of headache down the road. So there you have it. That's Yoast SEO and how it can help create content that clients on TextBroker just go nuts over. And like I said, I have yet to see any kind of revision request from clients when using WordPress this way. Now when using WordPress to write for TextBroker clients, I don't worry about backups. That's because I'm not really planning on saving anything. Essentially, this is just going to be WordPress. So if anything happens to the subdomain, I can just delete it and start over. Now this might not be perfect for everybody, but it works for me. And it works well for my clients. In fact, I stopped using platforms like LibreOffice and Microsoft Word to write content because of what WordPress offers me. What's great is if I wanted something extra, I could just add another plugin. The only thing you have to worry about is if you save a draft or if you try to hit publish. They don't want to hit publish because you're trying to sell this content to clients. However, you might want to hit the save draft button every once in a while. Luckily, between WordPress and Chrome, everything saves regularly, so I don't really lose anything even if a computer gets shut off. There's been a few times where I had to rewrite something, but it doesn't happen that often. The WordPress is really good about saving drafts. So there you have it. Those are the tools that I use to create content for clients, and I've been using these for about five or six years now. And I wish the sun would make up its mind on what it wants to do. But anyway, that's going to do it for me today. Do you like WordPress and what do you use it for? Leave in the comments down below. If you'd like more WordPress content videos, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the like button. I'm going to be producing more of these soon. Mostly I'm going to be creating how-tos in WordPress because my dad and my mom have their own websites. But anyway, that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you next week.